Welcome to 4.5, writing a function rule. Before we get started, make sure you have done 4.4 lesson check. The objective for this section, 4.5, is that we can write equations that represent functions. So to begin, we're going to talk about a couple sentences, fill in our blanks, and then get started with our first example. Many real-world functional relationships can be represented by equations. So that's why we use equations a lot. We can use an equation to find the solution of a given real-world problem. So the first two problems, example problems that we're doing today, are real-world situations. In example one, we have this problem. You can estimate the temperature by counting the number of chirps of the snowy tree cricket. The outdoor temperature is about 40 degrees more than one-fourth the number of chirps the cricket makes in one minute. What is a functional rule for the, that represents this situation? Well, first of all, let's think about what are our varying quantities? What is changing in this problem? There are two quantities that are changing. The first one is temperature, and the other one is the number of chirps in one minute. So that's going to be our two variables, and we always want to define our variables, so let's do that now. We're going to let T equal temperature, and N is going to represent the number of chirps in one minute. We need to look for the given information. What is important in this situation? Well, there are a couple key phrases. The outdoor temperature is about 40 degrees more than one-fourth of the number of chirps that are made in one minute. So what we're going to do now is write a graphic organizer that presents this information. So our graphic organizer is going to say the temperature is 40 degrees more than one-fourth of the number of chirps in one minute. This graphic organizer comes from the key sentence that we underlined. Now let's fill in our variable. So T stands for temperature. Is translates to equal sign. 40 degrees comes down. More than means we are adding. One fourth comes down. Of means we're multiplying. And the number of chirps in one minute is represented by N. So our equation or our function rule for this situation is this equation that we just found. T equals 40 plus one-fourth n. So if I were to give you uh, a number such as 16 chirps in one minute, what we would do would be we would plug in that 16 for the n, we would multiply the one-fourth and the 16, essentially we're dividing 16 divided by 4, that's 4, and we're adding that to 40, you get 44. So the temperature is 44 degrees uh, Fahrenheit when there are 16 chirps in one minute. So I think that's pretty neat. I hope you do too. Now you know about the snowy tree cricket and how it can help predict the temperature outside depending on its number of chirps. So that is a real life situation. Now we're going to go on to example two. This time it's about dogs. A kennel charges $15 per day to board dogs. Upon arrival each dog must have a flea bath that costs $12. So let's under, underline our key information again, $15 per day and a flea bath that only happens once that costs $12. So what is varying? Well our two varying quantities are the total cost and the number of days that the dog is boarding. So let's write that down. Now that we have our variables defined, we are ready to form a function rule or an equation. So let's see, we have the total cost is C, so that's going to be the, on the left side. The total cost is determined by how many days that the do dog is boarding, and it's 15 per day. So we're going to do 15 times N. We don't really need that dot there, but I'm just putting it there. Um, and also, it has to have a one-time flea bath, so plus 12. So I'm just going to label it below. 15 per day, and then here's the one-time flea bath. Part B says, how much does a 10-day stay cost? 
Well, what do you think we should do with 10? 10 is the number of days of boarding, so we're going to write n equals 10, and like we normally do, we're going to plug that in or substitute it in for the n. So c equals 15 times 10 plus 12. Using the 10 trick, you can just do 15 times 1, that's 15, put a 0 after that, that's 150, and you're adding 12, and when you add those together, you get 162. So $162 for a 10-day stay. Part C asks us, does a 5-day stay cost half as much as a 10-day stay? Explain. Well, at first glance, it seems like, yeah, 5 days is half of 10 days. But actually, it's a little bit more complicated than that. We need to figure out how much a 5-day stay will cost. We already know that a 10-day stay is $162. So let's figure out a 5-day stay. 15 times 5 plus 12. Just plugged in the 5 for the N. And we get 75 plus 12, and that equals $89. Is 89 half of 162? Not exactly. Half of 162 would be 81. So what is making the difference? Why isn't it half? Well, the reason why is because the boarding, besides the number of boarding days, the flea bath is required for each dog. So that is the reason why the five-day stay is not half as much as the ten-day stay. That flea bath is the reason. So we're going to write that down and we'll be done with this example. So our conclusion is that $89 is not half of 162, making the stay shorter only halves the daily charge, not the flea bath charge. Okay, moving on to the last example. This one is about a rectangle. Write a function rule or equation for the area of a rectangle whose length is 5 feet more than its width. What is the area of the rectangle when its width is 9 feet? Well, first of all, how do we find the area of a rectangle? Let's draw one right here. Hopefully you know this basic formula by heart. The area of a rectangle is length times width. Now, we're given a couple pieces of information. The first one is that the length is 5 feet more than its width. We need to write that down. And the other piece of information is the width is 9. So underline those two or highlight something like that. And now let's translate the phrase length is 5 feet more than its width into an equation. L stands for length. Is translates to equals 5 more than means we're adding, and the width. So that is our equation. I'll write that to the side. 5 plus w equals l. And now let's take that and plug it in for the l in the basic area equation. So we have, instead of putting l there, we're going to put 5 plus w. We are substituting it in. And now, by distribution, we're going to share the W on the outside. We're going to multiply. So now we have 5W plus W squared. That is the area formula. And as you can see, the length is not there at all. That's good because we don't know what the length is. We're going to be looking for that. So here's our formula. And now we're given that W equals 9. So we're going to plug that in for the W in both places of the equation. So it's going right there and also right there. So we have 5 times 9 plus 9 squared. 5 times 9 is 45. 9 squared is 81. Add those together and you get 126. So the area of the rectangle when the width is 9 feet is 126 feet squared or square feet. Now I just mentioned a couple minutes ago or seconds that we we're looking for the length. Technically we're not, but we could figure it out. Um, we might as well do that real quick and we'll be done. 
If the area is 126 and the width is 9, we can simply go back to the basic formula, length times width, and 126 over here, 9 for the W, and you just have to divide by 9. And when you divide, you get L equals 14. Another way to figure out the length is to simply take the um, width, which is 9, plug it in for the formula that we wrote earlier, and add 5, and that's also 14. So we just found the area formula based on width. We plugged in the 9 for the W, and we did our operations, and we found the area of this rectangle. It's 126 square feet, and the last thing we, we did was find the length of that rectangle. So thanks for sticking with me. You can try the lesson check for this section right now, or you can wait until we do similar problems together during class. Just make sure that you did the lesson check for 4.4 already. Okay, great. See you tomorrow.